Hey, this video is to address something that just kind of bothers me. It's just my little pet peeve of mine. And um, where I work, I work for a fire department. And as you can see, this is one of our trucks. It's my wife and my daughter when my daughter was three days old, so a couple of years ago. Um, and that truck right there, I would call yellow. But a lot of people refer to them as green trucks, more so than yellow. And that kind of bothers me because to me, it's clearly yellow. Um, and not that it's a big deal. And people may, you know, your eyes see different colors, colors differently than other people. Uh, some people are, a lot of people are colorblind to an extent. So is, is, I'm thinking, is it just me looking at this and thinking this is a yellow truck? Or is it really a yellow truck? And I'm here to prove scientifically that this is a yellow truck. Now, is this truck green as well? I will say, yes, this truck is green. It is just as green as it is red. And I'll explain that momentarily. So first thing, another pet peeve of mine, before we get into that truck, I want to show you this picture here. Half of it is black, half of it is white. And if I was to really quickly ask you which one of these contains all the colors and which one is the absence of color, um, which would you say? If you said black contains all colors, you are absolutely wrong. And I don't know why a lot of people think that black, well, I know why. I understand why people think that black contains all colors, because if you take a bunch of colored paints and you mix them all together, you're going to get a brown or a black color. And that's because when you're mixing paints, you're not mixing colors, you're mixing paints. You're actually subtracting colors every time you add paint. This is elementary school science class stuff, but people still get confused on that. And this is very important when we're looking at colors of stuff. And it's very easy to remember is that pure light is white, it hits objects, and the colors are either absorbed or bounced off. So if something is green, it's absorbing all colors but green, it's reflecting the green off, um, or it's not reflecting, but the green is bouncing off and hitting your eyes, and that's why it looks green. If it's blue, it's because it's absorbing all colors but blue. That's why when you mix colors, you mix, you know, blue and green and red, and you mix them all together, you're going to get a uh, a black color rather than a white, which if you were mixing colors and you mixed all three of those colors, you'd get white. If you mix the paints, each time you add one of those paints, the blue paint is subtracting everything but blue, and the green paint subtracting everything but green, you mix them together, and now you're subtracting all those colors, plus you're subtracting the green and blue, so you're going to get a dark brown or black color. So that's very important. So. Let's go back to our picture here of the yellow fire truck. And let's open up a color sampler here. Now I want to show you, we're going to be working with RGB to keep things simple here. That's red, green, and blue. And so each of these colors, as you can see, are put all the way down right now. Right here you can see where it says cur current color is the current color we're displaying. If I move red all the way up to 255, because we're working with 8-bit color here. Uh, so 255 is the most red you can get and zero is the least. And if you don't have any red or oh, sorry, green or blue and you just have the red up, this is pure red right here. That's as red as you're going to get. Now, anything in between moving this up and down is still red. It's just a different shade of red. So this is still red, it's just darker red. Same with green going all the way up and blue all the way up. And if we were to put all three colors all the way up, we get white because it has the presence of all three of these base colors, red, green, and blue. So how do we get yellow? We can see the blue bar here is yellow. So to get yellow, basically, it's red and green. So if I move this all the way down so there's no blue, but we have 255 and 255 of the green and the blue, I'm sorry, the green and the red, so they're up at 100%. 100% red, 100% green, this is pure yellow. So what color is the fire truck? And in the real world, we're not going to get exact colors because there's shading, there's lighting, there is reflection. But anytime that we have a very low blue or no blue, and the red and green are very close in equalness, it's a yellow color. So if I sample from the truck right there, so right now this is the color that I just sampled off that truck. 
you can see that blue is very low, it's at 35, but you can see that red and yellow, sorry, red and green are very close. In fact, where I sampled, and it's going to vary a little bit depending on where I sample from, there's actually more red in this sample I just took than green. So, but they're very close. So there's just as much red, and in fact, where I just sampled more red than green. So this truck is, where I sampled from is more red than it is green. And we can sample from a few different places. Uh, there's still more red there. Let's go on the side here. Still more red. So this truck is actually more of a red truck than it is a green truck. Uh, now, let's go ahead and put some colors onto this truck so we can see. So I'm going to move my sample uh, all the way down on blue. I'm going to move green all the way up. Okay, so now we're working with a pure green. I'm going to choose my paintbrush and I'm going to blotch some green right there. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so that is green. And if I now move red all the way up to a pure yellow and I'll sample that down, you can definitely see that this truck is more yellow than green. At least it's very clear to me. So here's another way we can look at uh, the colors. I can go up to my color settings here and choose the hue and saturation. Now hue will be um, basically what color it is. We can shift the colors here. So if I shift the hue, I'm shifting the hues for the whole picture here. So basically we're just offsetting the colors. They're all staying relative to each other, but we're just offsetting them to something else. Uh, lightness obviously is how light or how dark an image is. And saturation is how much color is there. So if I go up, it's going to be much more colorful. Whatever colors are in this picture, they're just now much more of that color. And if you move the saturation all the way down, that's called desaturation. And that's what most people would consider grayscale or black and white. It's not really black, white, it's grayscale. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset all of that. Now we were adjusting for the whole picture there, but you notice I can choose to adjust just certain color ranges. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click green. So now I'm only going to be affecting green colors in the picture. So it should affect this circle that's green and anything else that is green. So I'm going to move this the uh, hue here to per, per, do a, kind of a magenta color. You can see over here is magenta and it's almost the same. So I've offset the green so that it's magenta. You can see our green circle change. Everything else stays the same. But you'll notice the only other things that changed are in the reflection of the window here and back there, parts of the green trees because the trees are green. Now I'm going to reset that color. Now I'm going to choose yellow and I'm going to move our hue and lo and behold, the truck is changing but the green circle is not. Look, I just adjust it. Now it actually is a green color right here. So again, another example of this truck being yellow. Uh, so I'm going to reset that now. Now, I will say, now officially, from my understanding, these trucks, the technical color of the paint is lime yellow, which indicates there is going to be a little bit of green in there, but there's always going to be a little bit of green in there because green is part of yellow. Um, so it's lime yellow indicating there's slightly some green in there and I have seen trucks like such as this one which okay this one is getting to be more green. This is just one I got off the internet. There are some in my county, not necessarily my department for, per se, but I've seen other ones that are more of this color. Uh, so let's go ahead and sample that just to have a look at what color this is. And there you can go, you can see blue is still really low, red is kind of high, but the green is much higher. The green is actually where I just sampled from is, is uh, one number, one per not percentage, but one um, value away from being pure green. Uh, in the green, being 100% that is not pure green because we still have the red and blue there. So this one, where the other one, the red and the green on my truck, were very, very close making it a yellow, just a different shade of yellow. And the true, same is true here. So if I, remember I said that if we have the red here and we move this, it's just different shades of red. We're not necessarily changing the color, we're just changing basically how bright it is. I can move, if I move both the um, green and red at the same value, um, no, sorry, this bar here, I'm keeping them even, we're getting different shades of yellow here. Okay, so yeah, some trucks are a little more green than others. If someone said this was a green truck, I would find that acceptable, even though it's still a little more 
close to the yellow, it's somewhere in the middle. Um, and then of course there's the traditional fire engine red, which again, if I was going to colors and hues here, and I was to choose red, I could make this a yellow truck if I wanted to, or a red truck. And this is how I'm changing the colors of just the truck. I'm changing the colors of just things that are red. So the truck there, you also notice the guy's arm here because pigments in his skin have a little bit of um, red in there. So he's changing, but the majority of the picture isn't changing because I'm changing just the red. So that's one way. And the overall lesson of this video is to understand colors more. So I can just change the colors of the truck very easily because it's the only thing that's really red in this picture. If there were other red things, I would have to crop out and mask over the truck. So that's how you can change the color of a truck. And this is actually one of our newer trucks. Our trucks are getting switched over to red. A little bit of trivia there. Um, the reason that, and really there are a lot of trucks out there that are yellow, green, white, blue, although the, the lime yellow seems to be the most common, is uh, other than red. Uh, outside of the red trucks, the lime yellow seems to be the most common out there, and the reason for that is it's more visible at night, um, which obviously a brighter color is going to be more visible at night. Um, but then you can also argue, well, it's a big old truck with flashing lights. Does it really matter if you don't if you can't see the flashing lights on the truck? Is it going to matter? But that's the reason that a lot of trucks went to yellow, uh, the lime yellow, is because for safety issues. A lot of trucks are still red because of tradition, and supposedly the original reason that fire trucks were red is because the red paint was the cheapest. So, um, trying to think, oh, and then now some of you might be confused when I say that mixing red and yellow, um, I'm sorry, red and green equals yellow because you're used to working with other base colors, but just to show this a little more clearly, look at, you can Google this just like this, just Google color spectrum or a rainbow and if it's a true rainbow it's like the way the colors are supposed to be you'll notice that in all of them where there's green and then there's red and right in the middle is yellow and as you get close to the red you get your orange so in between greens and reds you're going to get your yellows and oranges so that's another thing just to show that I'm not making all this up about how colors work Anything that has a true color spectrum, that is an accurate color spectrum, you're going to have the yellows and oranges between the reds and the greens. And going back here, if I was to open up our color sampler again, and let's say we wanted to get a red, um, I could lower the screen down, leaving the red all the way up. And when I get to halfway, um, there you go. There, you, That's orange. So even though red and green all the way up are yellow, if you move uh, the green halfway down and leave red all the way up and blue still at zero, that's how you get an orange color. So just a little lesson on colors. Um, also a way for me to scientifically prove that this truck is yellow, it's not just my eyes. Um, and that's it. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope that you learned something, not just on uh, what color fire trucks are, but how colors work, and this is important when you're working inside uh, photo software, or anytime you're going to be adjusting colors, understanding how to mix them uh, and adjust them is important, and understanding how they work is equally important when you're trying to do that. So I thank you for watching, and as always, I hope that you have a great day.